Back in the wholesaling stone age, high tech was represented by the car phone that mounted in your trunk. A Kodak carousel slide projector and a newfangled portable computer that weighed just less than a cinder block. Today's wholesaler has an amazing array of technological innovations that enable them to access previously unavailable data, stay organized in unimaginable ways, and connect to clients and prospects with lightning speed. Here in the 2020s, wholesalers who fail to embrace all of the technological opportunities available to their practice are simply destined to spend their time chasing the sales leaders that understand its power. I'm your host, Rob Shore, and this series of shows from Wholesaler Masterminds Radio is called Wholesaler Tech Talk, sponsored by YCharts. Our goal is to explore the technology behind the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesaling. So strap on your propeller caps as we dive in. In over three decades of wholesaling, I've never seen wholesalers more excited about technology. By presenting data-driven strategies accompanied by dynamic visuals, technology is enabling wholesalers to better market their products and reduce friction in meetings. That's why I'm excited to introduce you to YCharts, a sales enablement platform that provides the data and tools you need to demonstrate your fund's value to advisors. Using YCharts in real time, you can objectively compare managers' and competitors' strategies, discuss how economic conditions impact your funds, and pull up visuals to compare key data points. YCharts will elevate your distribution team's collaboration with tools that allow internals to push charts, comp tables, screens and reports to externals on the road that enable more productive meetings and provide shareable content for value-add follow-up. And here's a special for you. YCharts is offering a free month to my listeners. Mention Wholesaler Masterminds when you email them at hello at ycharts.com or head to ycharts.com. All sailors, what are you doing around the whole area of technology and organization and pre-appointment preparation and securing the appointment and in-appointment success and follow-up process, all as it relates to technology? And what if you had someone that you could turn to that has walked in your shoes, they have been an external wholesaler and done it quite successfully and integrated technology in a way that, well, not everybody, in fact, most don't, would that, be, would that be helpful? I think it would. So what I did was I went out to the Wholesaler Masterminds group on LinkedIn. By the way, if you're not a member of the Wholesaler Masterminds group on LinkedIn, would you please join? 5,800 members, you join us. And I said, folks, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this expert that can help me. I'm looking for a wholesaler that really knows his or her stuff when it comes to technology and how it integrates into their practice. And if you know of anybody, would you shoot me a message? And our guest today shot me a message. Austin Young is currently CEO of Better Homes and Garden, Young and Company Real Estate in Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina. He took this role only earlier this year, partnering alongside his brother TJ to innovate the real estate industry by taking and applying the same technological and operational skills to real estate that had brought him great success within the wholesaling industry. Now, prior to this role, this role that just ended, that is his prior role just ended in December 2019, he was a business development director at John Hancock Retirement Plan Services, where he covered three sales teams across North Carolina and Virginia. He was one of the youngest wholesalers to make it out into the field, known in his territory, known for his PVP. Did you hear that, wholesalers? Known for his PVP as the advisor technologist and led the 2019 year in sales production for his role. Now, before that, he worked as an internal for John Hancock covering Arizona and New Mexico, in which his team was number two in sales two years in a row, while setting a record for the most plans sold in a year in the history of John Hancock, Austin Young. Welcome to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show, Wholesaler Tech Talk. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm delighted to have you here. So let's, let's, let's clear over one hurdle because, you know, if you're a listener out there, you're going, Rob, I thought you told me you had a wholesaler, but now you have a real estate agent. So what, first of all, wholesalers, what you should know is, you know, finding someone, anyone that is currently in the business that doesn't have to jump over compliance hurdles is obviously going to be a challenge. And when I spoke to Austin, his story was awesome and he just left the business. So Austin, what are you doing out there? What are you doing out there in no man's land when you could be wholesaling? I'm trying to sell real estate. What's the backstory? Tell us more. 
Yeah, so I, I, my grandmother had a company 40-plus years ago. Um, she's no longer with us, but my brother has been running it um, for the last three years. He realized he was at a point where business and sales, running the business as well as trying to sell, was, um, was a large task and knew he needed to bring someone in. So he gave me a call. Once I looked over everything, um, you know, I made that decision to jump and, and start to own my own business and work on my own business. Um, and that's where I, I took the step back from wholesaling into going on to run a 50-person um, real estate company. Well, that's awesome. So, so uh, we get to benefit from all of your knowledge as a wholesaler, now only three months removed, without having me worry about the compliance hassle. It's a beautiful thing. So what we want to do today is harvest your insights, and I'm going to be right there with you adding ideas as we go. Let's put this under the heading of 33 technology ideas wholesalers can use to improve their practice. That's, that's where we're going right here today. And we're going we're gonna to divvy it up into the sections of pre-meeting, securing the appointment, in-appointment success, post-appointment, follow-up, organization and time management. That's where we're going. So let's, let's dive right in. We're going to make crisp timing on these uh, because we want to get through as many of the 33 as possible because that's a lot. So let's start with uh, the basics. You got your you got rotation mapping. What did you do under rotation mapping, Austin? How did you handle that? Yeah, so pre-appointment prep. I wanted to know when I was going places um, where essentially everyone was located as far as the advisors that I covered. Um, so when thinking of the apps to use or the technology to use, um, this was just your your basic Excel. Um, so in Excel, there's the ability to take data, so addresses, names, um, and any other data that you have on advisors from your CRM, and you can map that, and it's called 3D mapping, and it allows you to map it geologically over um, a map to show you um, visually where everyone was located. So when I traveled from one place to another, I knew exactly that I was going to advisor's A office who else was around him or her, and then I could pre-plan um, different meetings based on location. And then I could also pinpoint advisors that were kind of out of the way that maybe other wholesalers didn't even know about because of their location, and it was all visual. So it allowed me to build that rotation out um, using that 3D mapping on Excel. And then what I did was use your rotation builder, actually, um, to map out my actual zones. So I would zone it out, and I would have seven different zones I covered, and then use your rotation builder, which then uploaded into uh, Outlook in my calendar. All so right, I would so, know so where hang, I would on. Be. hang on, hang on, hang on, because what I got to tell you, wholesalers, when, when Austin told me that you could use Excel for mapping, it completely blew my mind. Um, quick asterisk and a note here. Uh, arguably, the 3D mapping feature inside of Excel is for a more... Um, advanced user, which is to say you, you may not just open it right up and know exactly what's going on. So I just want to offer that with an asterisk, but also tell you that the same mapping functionality can be found. It's not the same, but a mapping functionality can be found by using BatchGeo, B-A-T-C-H-G-E-O, BatchGeo.com. Either way, it allows you to do exactly what Austin is saying, and that is I can take a data set, I can map it and understand where I'm supposed to be and when, and then, thank you for the shameless plug, Austin, put it into the uh, Wholesaler Masterminds Rotation Builder and have it upload directly to your Outlook. So item one, rotation mapping, either with Excel or Batch Geo. Item number two is advisor reconnaissance. So I know, Austin, that you were a fan of advisor reconnaissance. How did you go about learning things that would blow the advisor's hair back? How did you melt the natural icicles that exist in the sales situation? Yeah, so typically what I would do um, in a group setting, I would do my research beforehand, find out who would be at that meeting, and then I would pick on one advisor. And I would look up some information on them online um, that's easily accessible. Um, I used what's called Google Boolean searching techniques. And if you haven't used those before, it's how you type things in Google in order to have the search pages come back how you want them. Um, it can be anything from putting quotation marks 
around someone's full name. That way, when it searches, it's searching for their first and last name beside each other. Whereas if you don't use quotation marks, then you're searching each individual word. You can also add things as such as the city. Um, you can add things if you want to just search Excel files online or PDFs online. You can do um, different techniques like that as well. So I use some of that stuff to find information about advisors beforehand to show them, hey, this is possible. And then I would let them know when you're prospecting your client, you can use this too. Whether you want to call me and I can help you find information for the prospects, or I can teach you how to use the Google Boolean searching itself. And, and let's let's just stop right there because I am so heartened that you went by the moniker for your PVP, your peerless value proposition of advisor technologist. Real quick, how did you how did you land there, and how how profitable was creating that PVP for you? Well, it started with digitally savvy mentor. And then you were at one of our national sales meetings, and I brought that up, and you were like, you need to shorten it. And that's where advisor technologists came in. Um, how, it, how it helped me, I was in the 401k space. A lot of advisors did not do 401ks. They only came across them every so often. So you always want to be remembered. Um, so I knew I needed a way to differentiate myself from others, and I did that by simply saying I was the advisor technologist, and I would introduce myself that way. And it would at least get the advisor to take a step back and think, hey, what does that mean? And then allow me to have a deeper conversation with them. And I would have advisors call me at times just for technology questions and nothing to do with 401ks. But the point was is they remembered me from the advisor technologist and not the 401k aspect. But when they did come across the 401k, they would always remember to call me as well. That's awesome. All right. So thank you for that side street. We had to get that out of the way. And of course, I'm more than heartened that you had a PVP that worked because you know that we jump up and down about that pretty much every day. So advisor reconnaissance, learning how to do Boolean search. That's the use of things like quotation marks and or not including, not including all that good stuff. Or, or remember wholesalers, you can go out on our website and search for Sam Richter, Sam Richter, R-I-C-H-T-E-R. -E he has a sales intelligence search engine that can help you do some of the same things if you don't know or want to know how to do a Boolean search. All right, the next thing is all about email agendas. So sending email agendas in advance. Austin, you sent email agendas in advance, correct? Correct. And what did you, what did you do to churn those out? How did you make it easier? Well, I took my data sets, right? So I knew where I was going. Um, and usually it would be by zip code or counties. And then I would create a mail merge. And you had mentioned to me, I believe, uh, an app called Email Template. Correct. Now, I just used your simple Word document and then took the Excel data, um, the Excel data and created a mail merge. And what mail merge allows you to do, if you're not familiar, is send an email. It will send individual emails to each and every person on that data list. So you just are able to type out one email, upload the data, click OK, and send, and it will send out 200 plus emails if you want to, um, to anyone you want to meet with beforehand, or if you're doing a group meeting, you can also send that out to a larger area, um, letting them know of an event. I did a lot of CE events, so I would use MailMarch for CE, um, just to get the word out and get people registering for events like that. So two things there, wholesalers. Number one is the app. It's called Email Template. Email Template. And it, it plays really nice with your resident iPhone email application. So you can build a template and use that to really uh, expedite the crafting of an email. And then one of the things that Austin and I talked about was, you know, when you want to set up your agenda, you want to confirm with the advisor three to five business days in advance of an upcoming meeting. You want to confirm three to five business days in advance of an upcoming meeting. And maybe you want to set all those up on your office day. Well, if you want to set all those emails to go out from your template on your office day, but you don't want them sent until three to five business days in advance, then you get into Outlook and you use that send later feature. So two things, email template app, and then separately using your Outlook send later feature. All right, we're going to keep the pace going here. I well, hope. And Rob, yeah, I'll add go. something. Yeah, yeah. I always found out that it was best to use that feature and send it early in the morning, like 5 a.m. 
6 a.m. is when you schedule it to go out. Great tip. Why? Because one, if an advisor gets an email at 5 or 6 a.m., that's the first thing they're going to look at right when they get in the office. But two, when they see it sent at that time, they think that you're up and running full speed at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. So it gives you just that little edge above your competition. Ooh, I like that a lot. Okay. So there were two more, two more ideas there. We're going to keep the hits coming. Securing the appointment. Now, there's a lot of things around securing the appointment. And in fact, one of them we just talked about was that pre-appointment reminder, three to five business days in advance. But there's also tools to help you do that. Austin, you used Schedule Once. Tell us quickly about that. Yep. So Schedule Once um, allowed, and I'm sure most of you have seen in an email, click here to schedule my calendar. Um, that's essentially what it is. It, it's, a, it's a website, a tool you can use. What I really liked about Schedule Once is that I could upload each and every zone that I was going to be at already. And then when an advisor clicked that calendar link, they could go to their location, click their city, and then would be able to see on my calendar when I would be in that city. And then that calendar is already integrated into my Outlook calendar to show what times I have blocked off. And I could pre-set everything there. Um, oh, let me say that back to you for the folks that weren't following along. So inside of something like Schedule Once, or you could use something like Acuity Scheduling, or you could use something like Calendy, all have similar, maybe somewhat different pieces of functionality. You can set up your calendar availability by zone. Then when somebody clicks in, they can select the city that they reside in. Then your availability in that particular zone or city will show up. And once they click, it will automatically get logged into your Outlook calendar and also send them an invitation. And also, in the case of Acuity, which we use at Wholesaler Masterminds, it'll send them a 24-hour reminder that you're coming. Awesome. Did I get that right, Austin? You got it. All right, super. Let's talk about in-appointment success. There's some random stuff here, and there's also some really important stuff here. You said something about a revolving iPad case. And I know it sounds really granular, wholesalers, that he was using a, a revolving iPad case. But number one, Austin, what the hell is it? And number two, why was it kind of, you know, you said it raised some eyebrows with advisors. Tell me more. Yeah, so again, my um, PVP was advisor technologist, so I wanted to have the latest and greatest. So my iPad case um, wasn't your normal one that just protected the iPad. You would be able to remove the iPad from the keyboard portion, or it would be able to go 360 and flip around. So if I'm sitting on the other side of an advisor from his desk and I want to pull up some type of material or some type of demo, I didn't have to flip the whole case around. All I did was do the 360 or I guess 180 motion in that case and turn the screen itself to them and then the keypad would still be on my side. Oh. And it was just, you know, I don't think it was anything special, but I would always get these comments like, oh, that's really cool. And it would just kind of reinforce that advisor technologist you know, mantra that I, that I had. But that's the thing about it, right? You don't know what's going to an impress an advisor. You know, it's, it's kind of up and down the spectrum. Is it your in-depth knowledge of inverse ETFs and how they operate in a bear market? Or is it the iPad case that you use that revolves? You just don't know. So you might as well be good at all the stuff up and down the food chain. The second thing that you mentioned to me was that you wanted to have technology that you controlled at the point of a meeting versus technology that you were at the mercy of when you went into a meeting. Tell me more about that and what you did to resolve that. So what I did was in group meetings, I would say, uh, more than your one-on-one -on -one scenarios, yes. I used um, Apple TV. Okay. So Screen mirroring, I think, was um, is what I used with the Apple TV, and it allowed me not to have or be bound by the cord, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be able to walk around with an iPad and interact um, and be free of that cord, which if you've ever seen someone present behind a podium or with a laptop trying to do a demo, sometimes it doesn't flow as well as you wish. So that just allowed me to have that freedom and then connect the screen um, to whatever I was projecting it to, whether it be a, a projector or, um, or a TV screen. And I even had, you know, I thought it was the simplest thing in the world, but I would have other wholesalers ask me about it all the time, the ones that I partnered with. Um, and I also even had one that would call me repeatedly asking how to get their Apple TV set up because they were 
so impressed by it. You know what's important about that wholesalers is uh, the, the whole notion of you taking back the control of the technology, if at all possible, so that you're not at the mercy of, do they have that cable? Do they have that attachment? Is it hooked up correctly? Will the TV accommodate? This is you being able to take back that technology. And I think that's important to keep that flow of the meeting in your control with devices that are convenient, number one, and familiar to you, number two. Austin, we talked about using AirDrop, and I know you said that you hadn't used it as much, but I thought we should throw that in there. Um, I'll give you my my very uh, real first uh, um, uh, occurrence with using AirDrop. I was actually speaking uh, at then the IMCA meeting, and I asked the AV guys in the back to take some pictures of me while I was on stage, and they did. And I came back and I said, oh, did you take the pictures? He goes, yeah, I actually did them on my phone, and I'll AirDrop them to you. And I just kind of looked at them like, what, AirDrop? What's AirDrop? So if you haven't explored it, AirDrop is super simple. I am sitting with my device, you are sitting with your device. They both need to be Apple devices, whether it's laptop, iPad, iPhone. And simply through Bluetooth, I can send them to you. So I'm gonna look for you being connected to me and you can set it up for anybody, anybody with, with a, a, an AirDrop, uh, iPad, iPhone, uh, 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 a MacBook, uh, sitting with you can receive it or only in your contacts. You can set your phone to be either way, but then you can just start shooting people stuff. So if you're sitting with a financial advisor and they want your material that you're showing them, yes, of course you can email it to them, but you could also eyedrop it to them or excuse me, airdrop it to them versus eyedrop it to them. All right, the next one is super important because I, I, this will give a little timestamp on where we are today. Uh, I don't know when you're listening to this, but when this is recorded, we are absolutely in the throes of the coronavirus. Uh, we are in the throes of companies making decisions about whether wholesalers will be permitted into offices, wholesalers, whether they'll be permitted to jump on planes by their company to go visit advisors. And the whole notion of virtual meetings is picking up a great deal of interest and importance. And in fact, if you have not listened, I want you to go back and listen to the episode that we did with Marquesa Petway talking about success with virtual meetings. Having said that, there's four areas that are of primary interest. The big four, if you will, are Zoom, Loom, WebEx, Join Me. Austin, quickly, where have you had experience with virtual meetings? Have you had success with virtual meetings to replace face-to-face -face meetings? You and I haven't discussed this, I know, in advance, but, but have you had any success in that area? I have. So I used WebEx, and I actually used this frequently on the desk as an internal, um, where I would use WebEx to have that virtual meeting, to be able to share different marketing, different demos, things of that nature. And then when I got out into the field, I would also use it um, just as frequently whenever I had my office days. You know, I, I covered three territories. It was two full states. I couldn't be everywhere at once. So there were many times that I would be pulled over on the side of the road and either my internal would be running the WebEx or I would run it myself. And just going through the motions of having your ideal meeting, everyone nowadays, I think, they want the information and they know, especially if you've met them before, you don't always have to be in person to get them that information. I think they're appreciative of the fact that you're able to accommodate that via WebEx as well. Awesome. Let's talk about post-appointment follow-up. So the first one, and I know that you didn't necessarily use it because you had some other methodology that you use, but wholesalers, you should be aware we have a follow-up task worksheet. Is follow-up task worksheet supposed to be your primary follow-up device? No, actually your primary follow-up device should be good follow-up prompts and cues that are already programmed into Salesforce that come up X many days after your appointment to tell either you or your internal partner that a certain thing is supposed to happen. Having said that, I know you've got some ideas, Austin. One of them was scan biz cards. That's an app. Is that correct? You've got it. What did that do besides the obvious? I believe it's 99 cents, but mm -hmm. um, what it allows you to do, I would always collect a business card at the end um, of a meeting, and you just simply take a picture of the business card. All of the information on the business card is now in that app. And then at the end of the day, the end of the week, um, however you fit that in your schedule, you would be able to export it to an Excel file and send it to your internal team to have them upload those advisors um, to your system if they're not already in there. 
Awesome. It also has features to be able to upload to Salesforce and different CRM systems as well, um, depending which systems you use. Which is awesome because obviously the more that we can integrate different systems, different devices, different apps, have them talk to each other, that is preferred, of course. And it should be mentioned as well, wholesalers, you know that we're a fan of Evernote. And if you don't, I'm telling you, I'm a big fan of Evernote. Go to the website, type in Evernote and see the posts that we have done, including the post that we've done that shows you how Evernote takes business cards and links that to LinkedIn, syncs that to LinkedIn. So you can actually have this again, these systems talking to whether Evernote is actually talking to LinkedIn by virtue of a business card that you have scanned. It's awesome. The next thing I want to talk about, Austin, you had an idea and I did some homework to figure out what services could do it. I don't know if you found out since our last discussion, which the service was, but it was a really unique sales idea, a really unique keep in touch idea, a really unique follow up idea, which uh, had to do with taking an image and sending it to an advisor. Yep. The, the app's called Thank You Pro. Um, and it would allow you to take a picture and use on the front of a, a postcard and then write a thank you note um, to send later on after a meeting. So I would sometimes take a picture of like a building that they were in, or if I had an event, I would take a picture at the event of, you know, um, someone speaking at it or just the audience in general, and then send the thank you note afterwards to everyone who attended. Which is, I mean, think wholesalers, think about this. You could do this at the golf course. You could do this over a group dinner. You could do this at a more structured meeting event where you take a picture of the speaker. You could take a picture of the staff inside of the office. You could take any picture that you want, turn it into a postcard, and they'll send the postcard for you. Now, you mentioned Thank You Pro. I've got three others for you. One is My Postcard, one is Touch Note, and one is Postagram. So wholesalers, there's three more that you could potentially use. They're all apps that do the exact same kind of thing. I'll let you decide which is best. And then the last one I want to tell you about in post-appointment follow-up, when Austin reached out to me to tell me that he would be gracious enough to be on this podcast, even though he's no longer a producing wholesaler, he left me a voice message inside of LinkedIn, blew my mind. Austin, tell me about it. So it's a new feature in LinkedIn. It's probably been out about... I would say six months now. So I don't think a lot of people are even recognize that it's there. Um, you can only use it on your mobile device or iPad. You can't do it from your computer that I know of as of now. Um, but it allows you to voice record a message to someone in your network and send them a voice message. What they get on their phone is Austin Young sent you a voice message. And when they pull it up, they're able to just see a play button. And everyone likes to be curious, so if you, if you are able to spark kind of the curiosity of what happens if I click play, well, now they're going to hear your voice, you create a more personalized approach, and I would do this to get meetings as well, um, and it would just have that voice recording there for you. It was so cool, wholesalers. I mean, picture again, it, it goes in the same place that a normal written message would go inside the LinkedIn messaging function. But instead of showing words, it just shows this really simple, elegant blue play button. And there was Austin telling me that he'd love to be on the podcast if he thinks it could be of service to us. Awesome. Let's talk about organization and time management. This is all going to really have to do because there's so much to unpack here potentially. Let's just talk, Austin, about what we do inside of organization and time management, really around emails. We're just going to focus there for a hot second because we always get bogged down in emails. So one of the things you talked about was color coding emails. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I, I worked on three teams. Um, so I would color code each team uh, within Outlook. So anytime I've got an email from a certain team, they would come in and that's a certain color. So that would help me just recognize things that I need to look at immediately um, versus things that might just be coming into my email, whether it be spam or just things over the course of a day. Um, so color coding helped me just be able to see kind of what was going on without actually having to read anything uh, as far as my internal versus my external um, teams that I worked with. Perfect. The other thing I want to mention about emails is converting emails into events. So for instance, I don't use Outlook, but I use Thunderbird. It allows me to click on an email and immediately convert it into an event that goes into my calendar. So think about this. You're looking at an email and you're like, oh yeah, I know I need to schedule time to do that. Or I need to block time on my calendar to do that. Or I need to make sure that I allow this to take place or make an appointment with the doctor. Whatever the thing is, 
you can simply click on that email and create it into an event. So now you get to create the event and get rid of that email all at the same time. That is super efficient, super effective, great for organization, great for time management. And then Austin, we also talked about setting up rules. How did you use rules inside of Outlook? Yeah, so, and what I would say with the, the events, um, with Outlook, it's called meetings. Meetings, so okay. You just click the meeting button at the toolbar and it allows you to create a meeting and would have all of that email um, correspondence in that meeting invite as well, which is super helpful when you're on the go. Perfect. Thank um, you for that. As far as rules, what I would do is to think uh, we would have like production reports that would come out daily or weekly um, and different emails that were repetitive. And so what I would do is create rules that would allow any emails like that to go in a certain inbox. And I would have a file system in my email, my Outlook, um, and just have certain folders that these emails that were repetitive would go into. Once you set up the rule, you say such and such is the sender of that email, and then you can allow the rule to manage which folder it goes into. That's awesome. And, and you can do rules by who is the sender. You can do it by an individual keyword company name. You can do it by someone's individual uh, title. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can set it up, but rules allow you to never see the em em email in your inbox. It automatically goes to this other place. You could do it by account. You could do it by the type of email. So think about rules to help clean out your inbox. All right, Austin, you ready for the lightning round? We don't we didn't even tell everybody that the lightning round is coming. Yeah. Here we go. This is the apps lightning round. I got seven apps for you. Austin, I have seven apps for you. And I want to just lay these on you real quick. I promise you, you'll probably have to play this back so you can hear all of them or you can go to the show notes and check it out. The first one is Goodreader. Austin, what's Goodreader? It's essentially just like Adobe Pro. Um, it allows you to have PDF files or any type of files like that. You can make markups on it. You're able to sign things from it. Um, but it is a app that is a central folder or location that you can store any of your files or any of your um, your PDF files, Excel files, etc. Awesome. So here we go. I'm going to go through the next seven. Austin, you don't even know about these. I'm going to ask you to make a note on any of them. When we're done, I'm going to come back to you and say, do you have any comment on these seven? Number one is Spark. Spark is a new email reader that I've been using. Instead of using the resident Apple email client, which is just the email program on your iPhone, I've been using Spark because I find Spark is quicker. It is more effective. It is more convenient and is far more flexible. Spark, S-P-A-R-K. Snapseed is for images. If anybody takes photos with their phone, oh, everybody, and you want to make them look better because you are an amateur photographer as I am, check out Snapseed, which is a Google program that allows you to change how an image looks to enhance it, to crop it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Snapseed. Keyring. Keyring allows you to take all of your membership cards and put them all in one place. So you've got membership cards for airport clubs. You've got membership cards for hotels. You've got membership cards for the gym. You've got membership cards for CVS, for the local department store, for the local supermarket. Put them all not on your keychain, but on key ring, which is an app. It allows it to be scanned at the point of sale, and that will cut down on the amount of crap you have to carry around. Next one is scannable. Scannable, S-C-A-N-N-A-B-L-E. This is when you want to send a document in a PDF form. This also connects well and plays nice with Evernote. It's an Evernote program. So as an example, my real estate agent wanted me to send them a complete tax return, 130 pages of tax return. I just simply took a picture of it with Scannable and sent it directly off to her. Scannable. Brave, B-R-A-V-E. Brave is a browser for secure searching. What Brave does is it automatically strips out a lot of advertising, not all, but most importantly, all of those trackers that are put on your browser, unknowingly you are being tracked with everything that you do. Brave catches all those in the process, therefore speeding up your experience, B-R-A-V-E. If you're in a hotel, if you are in a public place, if you are in a Starbucks and you want to access your bank account, lordy, 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 you best not be doing it by Wi-Fi unless you have something like VPN Unlimited. VPN Unlimited allows you to set up a virtual network that now takes your information and routes it through a server 
that is away from the actual server that you're on. It'll be a different IP address. It'll be more secure, if not completely secure. I am not a complete propeller head. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know I use VPN unlimited when I need to access something on my phone that is more, or on my laptop, that is more secure in nature, and I don't want prying eyes to get into it. And the last one is flighty, F-L-I-G-H-T-Y, flighty. I came across this as a great travel app, which gives you much more robust information about the location of aircraft, about what's happening at airports, about weather as it relates to flying. And the quote that I saw that got me interested is in was, uh, frequently flighty knows about it before the crew at the airport even knows. So Austin, that was our lightning round. Do you have anything to add there? That was a lot. Um, App-wise, I mean, a OneDrive, I don't think we mentioned it, but if you are using um, Word and Outlook and things of that nature, OneDrive is just a cloud-based uh, feature that can also store all of your files so you can access from one um, you know, one device to another. Yep, that's and the competitor to Evernote. It's an Evernote competitor. Same concept. Yeah. Uh, it's a Microsoft product versus Evernote that's uh, not a Microsoft product. Yep, and then um, I've... I've VPNs, I think, are very familiar in uh, the financial industry. What I will add, I, LinkedIn, we mentioned the LinkedIn voice feature. What I didn't mention to you before is if you're at an event and you want to add people to LinkedIn, if you click My Network in your LinkedIn on your mobile device, at the very bottom right-hand corner, there's a person with a plus sign. And if you click that and click Find Nearby and you turn that on, Anyone else who has theirs on, you're able to add them directly to your LinkedIn from there. That's awesome. So I would use this at big events, and I would get, if I'm speaking there, I would get everyone to go turn theirs on, and then that way not only you can connect with them, but they can connect with others in that same event as well. That's awesome. All right, look, we are flat out of time. Wholesalers, you're going to have to go back and listen again. I know you are. We gave you, you know, we started out with 33. By the time we were done, it could be 35 or 36 technology ideas that you can use to, uh, that you can use to improve your practice. And our guest was Austin Young. Austin, I thanked you before we got on the call. I'm going to thank you again. You're no longer a wholesaler. Uh, you didn't have to do this and you did. And I'm so deeply appreciative. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate the, the opportunity and, um, you know, it has been a pleasure and I hope we can do something again sometime later. Awesome. Wholesalers come back next time for another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. In this case, Wholesaler Tech Talk. Does this sound at all familiar? You've had a successful meeting with an advisor. You've made a note to reschedule her for another meeting next time you're in town. You place a call, you send an email or two, and you don't get a reply. And even though you intend to follow up to secure the appointment, the advisor drops off your radar. That, right there, is where wholesaler mastermind schedulers come in. We excel at what we call pleasant persistence. Staying after your list of appointments to be scheduled with dogged determination, remaining consummately professional and, well, pleasant. We've scheduled over 46,000 appointments. How many can we schedule for you? Check out Wholesaler Mastermind Schedulers at WMMSchedulers.com. That's WMMSchedulers.com. You'll find all of our content at WholesalerMasterminds.com, and the podcast can be found at iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Play.